The Cabal. War, wanted or not, is all they understand. And so we taught them. Sand Eaters, scattered. Dust Giants, belled. Ice Reapers, buried. Siege Dancers, broken. Until we grew complacent, and Gaul drove a blade between our ribs, left us gasping before the vanguard showed them that the light cannot be tamed so easily. I should have stepped forward, stamped the Red Legion into extinction. Instead, I ran the banner and watched the city's victories dull our edge once more. It should have ended before they fattened us, before they exploited us, before they forced us to lift up a murderer as our savior. Another Cabal warmonger now leads a fleet off Nessus. No more waiting. We will be there to put her in the ground. Even my people have a word for peace, but we do not use it often. Or lightly. I wouldn't have summoned you if I was not sincere. Peace with the Cabal. The darkness crowds the edges of this system. The Hive serves it. You'll fall to one if not the other. My world did. Empress Keitel, I'm sorry for what you've lost. We have all suffered. I propose an alliance. Cabal don't ally. They conquer. She betrayed her father to Gaul. Don't think she won't put a gilded knife in your back too. My father was soft. He lacked ambition. As you do. Humanity won't survive unless the commander expands his horizons. Join my empire. You'll keep your title and gain a seat on my war council. With my army and your light, the Cabal will crush the Hive. Then, the Black Fleet. Bow. No. Very well. Ready yourself, Commander. I'll sharpen my gilded knife and see you both on the battlefield. New style suits you. Spoils of victory in the reef. Glint chose the materials. You haven't let me pay for any of this. If you want to repay me, keep that mask affixed to your face. It will protect you from the city's ignorance. I know what it's for. If this is what it takes to make a difference, I'm in. I've had to walk these streets under the skies more times than you know. Now I am welcome. Soon you shall be too. Patience and caution. Ah, Guardian. Saladin spoke highly of your assault. They think their tank is a show of strength, but it is no Iron Lord. Saladin will hold the line so our attention can be directed elsewhere. Names are needed. Examples. My friends in the Reef have been talking. At this point, Red Legion commanders are either brutes or braggarts. Not the type for subtlety. They want Keitel's attention. We will use that information to direct our fury. Create a power vacuum and show the Cabal the path they've chosen. Dismissed. Together in the field. Huh. I'm starting to get the impression you all like having me around. Warriors of the Empire. 
I see your fury. For years you have waited for your leaders to reclaim you. But time has not changed your nature. Your rage becomes the swing of the cleaver, the thrust of the shield, the shout of the cannon. I send out a challenge to the remains of the broken legion. Prove your worth in battle. The ancient rites live again. The triumphant will become the first members of my war council. We are Cabal. We eat the mountains. We drink the seas. The dragon of your light roars over Nessus. Our enemies fear you. Did I keep you waiting? I've been busy managing the antics of your commanders. Antics? <laughs> Time-honored traditions. They don't concern you. You're auditioning members for your war council. I'd say that concerns us very much. Your commander could be a valued member of it, if he would accept my offer. You seem like a wise man. We both know that the best victory is won before the war even begins. I'm giving humanity a way out. Savala can end this now. You can end this now. A Cabal Empress with a penchant for mercy. It's a novel idea. You've learned from the mistakes of your predecessors, but I see how you lean on tradition when you fear a loss of control. I see your uncertainty, dithering. As for what I know, I know that an empress without an empire is in no position to offer anything. The Cabal have lost their home, not their honor. If we are to die, we will take many with us. Tell your commander my patience is running out. Your orders remain the same. Honor or no, without a war council, she'll have no war. Commander Zavala, I thought to contact you directly, free from the prying interests of advisors. When I was a child, listening to stories of the Cabal's many rulers, I imagined that sovereignty was absolute power. The power to triumph, to spill blood, to rule. But now I realize the ironic truth Sovereignty is a form of servitude. As Empress, my people's will comes before my own. That is why Cabal forces cannot leave the Soul System empty-handed. After losing Toro Bartle, we cannot lose our honor. It's the only thing we have left. You offer an alliance as equals, but I offer something even more valuable. Exaltation. Within our ranks, the Guardians will be revered. They will be free, as the Scions are now. They will be our most elite force. The pride of the Cabal Empire. So, for the last time, join us. For revenge against the Hive. For survival against the Darkness. Join me. Join the Cabal. Sometimes I like to listen to the city's pulse. I hear it best when the people are asleep. And when I'm alone. It was a warm night. And I wanted to feel the breeze on my face. I took a walk through the first garden we planted inside these walls. To remind myself how far we've come. We've made so many sacrifices since those early days. 
But with the green of that garden and the murmur of the city we built up around it, I could be at peace for a little while. Have you ever felt someone's eyes watching you, Guardian? You might not believe it, but I knew he was there before I saw him. I turned, and there he was, Aldrin Sov, his spirit haunting me. Then he shouted a warning, and something snapped in the trees behind me. I spun around, my gun in hand, before I realized I'd drawn it. It all happened so fast. A cabal assassin, one of Keitel's, no doubt. When I looked back for Prince Eldrin, he was gone. Was it a troubled spirit? A hallucination? I wasn't sleeping well before. Now I'm not sure I will at all. Let our blood be the last spilled. Let this ground be hallowed. Let honor bind us. I didn't order this. Bring me the one who pulled the trigger. They'll know who did. Look. Oh. Are you all right? I'm... alive. Several months ago, a Cabal vessel bearing the name Glycon disappeared near the reef. This ship matches its description and heading. So far, our hails have gone unanswered, and the distress signal continues to loop. You're clear for live fire engagements. Board it, and find our missing guardian. There's a distortion in the feed, no frequencies. Like ripples meeting in conversation. Executing trace. Stand by. I've sourced a distortion. There's an open patch into the ship's computer. Perhaps courtesy of our lost friend. Those spores are harmonizing with the nearby concentration of darkness. There's no light here. Sarcophilus growths with cores of darkness. The material is organic. It reminds me of a certain flora kept by our silver-tongued drifter. Curious. The Cabal here, their minds hang suspended in the death rows of cognition, falling into a singularity. Glycon navigation system marks their destination as an anomaly left in the wake of Mars's disappearance. Guardian, you're not the only life sign aboard. I see at least one other. Maybe our missing friend 
It may not. Scorn. They did not come from Callus's menagerie. The dark ether in this device has been tampered with. Its connection to the darkness galvanized, rooted. Callus always did embody a clever sort of madness. I found a journal of Callus's scribe, Armsat. Translation as follows. Today, Callus graced the Glycon with his presence and gazed upon the anomaly. His counselors prepare the exhibition chamber with gold from the Castellum. They are confident the crown is ready. The end will lay eyes upon him and weep at his magnificence. This ship's passageways no longer connect as they should. Oh, the dark. They relent. We must not. Forward. Guardian, I've pieced together another of Armsart's records. It reads... Tragedy of silence. He tore the wilting failures apart himself. The connection is strong, but the darkness does not speak through them. An ocean without wind. Even the light bearer could not coax it to awaken. Anger systems are intact. Why didn't they try to run? Jump logs indicate this ship made birth from the Leviathan. Its pilot has an officer's clearance. A guardian appears to have a long and storied history with the Emperor. Bring back some tales, Guardian. Wine? No. Concentrated dark ether. These are similar to Galron's chamber in the Royal Baths, but without life support systems. Micro etchings along the interior walls. Scratches. Armsad kept notes on experiments as well. It seems that Scorn, exposed to the anomaly, all suffered contiguous neuron death. It consumed their minds. All but one who spoke with many dead voices. This survivor would become the centerpiece of their studies. You see that like this isn't your fault. You can't blame yourself for every missing guardian, Osiris. Put this decrepit creature to rest. Guardian, this anomaly left in Mars's wake. I've seen it and others like it. Too many scorn for an active guardian. In place of each world the darkness stole. At the edge of our heliopause. Callus meant to commune with the darkness. This is an address from Callus to his crew. I chose Galran, and his frailty betrayed us. He was too pure, too alone. Our new guests are neither. A glorious chain of dark minds, an open mouth for the one in the darkness that it may sing in exaltation of my majesty. Greatness recognizes greatness. To invoke the attention of the end, our offer must be great. Faint traces of light. That thing was a guardian. We're too late. Far too late. Take the rifle. It was offered, was it not? Better in your hands than left for another. I'll speak to Savala about authorizing exploratory outings. If we can recover our lost friend's ghost, we may learn more of how he died. Return to the city. We must assess our findings. Exploratory outing. Presage. Designation VG-999. I am receiving you. Not finished picking at Cabal Bones? Keitel? Have you no more officers to send in your place? You're trespassing, and I need information on that ship. Withdraw. This is a rescue operation for a wayward ghost. Interference here would not end well for you. Rescue? The Cabal are not animals. Send in your guardian, but Callus belongs to me. 
As long as I see him dragged from this hole, I don't care who does it. And keep your distance and leave us be. I've lived aboard these ships. I know their systems. You need me. We shall see. What will you do with Kallus if he is found? Autocrats only know obsession. His gluttony exposed us. So I'll feed him all the trimmings of his failure. Until his belly bursts. Scans of the anomaly they chased. Left in Mars's wake. It's a part of the darkness. One piece of a larger web. Others align with our missing planets and moons, as well as many points beyond Sol's borders. Callus's scribe identifies a voice in the darkness. One of their mother. Of dead enemies. Of ghoul. They say it spoke to Callus in his own voice. Taught him how to commune. His counselors work to isolate and contact the entity that speaks. How many Cabal died for this? Enough, it would seem, to achieve the Emperor's desired result. Emperor, this derelict is his empire. Sacrifice to pride, paid for in blood. Are those Elixni? At one time, their ether was bound with darkness. Now they're scorn. Rot-minded and easily swayed to violence. The perfect vessel. If one could keep them contained. A Scorpius turret. Its munitions are spent. The battle report shows skirmishes across the ship, battling several containment breaches. Still, Callus pressed on. This infestation. I've seen it before. Sibu Arath slaughtered my people. What was it like, that inevitability? Like burning alive, and realizing the flames are just the beginning. Gasps of scorching air. Helpless panic. The smell. Was it any different when Gaul raised the city? Survivors like us are embers in the dark. Delicate. Defiant. Osiris sends you through a trash compactor. If you were Cabal, I would lift you into the stars. You have never sounded more like your father. I thought you killed that. The Cabal have suffered too many losses for vanity. Petulance. First Callus, then Gaul. But not you. Don't insult me. I've grown wise from watching monuments topple. No mercy for false gods. Half these ships ran routes to the Tangled Shore. Where they harvested the scorn for their experiments. This hangar took in ships from all over Seoul. The Leviathan could be lurking at any of those coordinates. You're my favorite. Your missing guardian was working with my father. So it would appear. If his ghost were recovered, would its memories be... accessible? That remains to be seen. A refuse heap. Darkness, soot, ether. They were burning the spent scorn to ash. Cabal regalia tracks combat data. I can access this. An incendiata, deployed to halt the Scorn reanimation. The incendiata was later embedded with a team, said to detonate the ship's reactor. They rose on their own? That is a new and concerning development. Resurrection does not make one invulnerable. Your kind taught us that. These orders did not come from Callus. Callus's surgeons experimented on the scorn. Cranial dissections. Dark ether drownings to engorge them. Science carved telepathic imprints into their brains. Linked them together in shared consciousness. Their collective mind was then opened through an artifact. A crown of possession. All to exploit their connection to the darkness. Had Callus seen Toro Bottle fall? As I did. 
would he have learned then? No. You burned away. I saw it. What do you hear, Empress? Mistakes. Thrown on the pyre of my past. You... heard something different? The ignorance of my youth. The pain of change. Unproven faith wilted by logic. Your people do not appreciate you as I do. I promise you true power. Here you shall find me. A ghost was injured here. The remnants of its light pooled around the dark center. A memory preserved in physical form. You said you wouldn't. You. Promised. Everything you say is a lie. I believe I found a record of first contact with this voice. It says, I, Amsat, scribe of Glycon, rejoice. The scorn are won, rejoice. They bear the weight of the crown elegantly, rejoice. They whisper anticipation. Rejoice. Our Emperor hears the voice of salvation. Rejoice. Sycophants. All of them. Enabling his madness. What is that thing? Our lost guardian. Can your ghosts undo that? Not so far as I'm aware. Then why are you searching for it? Answers? Same as you, Empress. If there is nothing else, I must analyze the Glycon's archives. My cruiser will monitor the situation here. A path to the ghost still eludes us. Until we return then. A chalice of opulence. The inscription reads, To my captain, cast your shadow in the face of darkness, that you might drink of its beauty and grow fat. Your guardian was a traitor then, seduced by Callus's posturing. Like so many powerful fools who think themselves invincible. I'm receiving you, guardian. The Vanguard saw value in our investigation. We are tasked with the recovery of any information or relics pertaining to the darkness. Welcome back to the Glycon, guardians. I expected you to be gone after the armistice. This ship is Cabal. I have a duty to its crew while Callus remains free. What have you found in our absence? Hidden records in Glycon's mainframe. From your lost guardian. They're decrypting as we speak. Transmitting the first decrypted message. He's been drinking more and more of that royal slop. I see him pawing at the ear for hours, laughing. Eyes glazed over. There's another alignment tomorrow. Maybe I can slip the hangar and get lost before anyone notices. I know a few Guardians who might want to hear what I've seen. Did your data mining yield anything about a crown? Amsat detailed an ornate procession that brought a hive crown from Leviathan to Glycon. It allowed the darkness to invade the Scorn's thoughts. Not the darkness. The Entity. The two are entwined. Does the difference matter? That there is a difference makes our understanding of the darkness a facade. What do you presume they are? The crown? The entity? Idols. Sustained by fixation. Until there is nothing left to reap. Our lost guardian must have sent this frame to broadcast their distress signal. This interface is of human design. It recounts a descent into the anomaly. Gravitational oscillations broke and reformed the Glycon many times over. It is as if every permutation of the ship's existence collided in one space. Keitel, it seems Callus has fled. Amsat states, Emperor Callus has left us, his shadow broods. The legionaries spread rumors saying, he merged with darkness. He is dead. He fights to save us. Words dipped in false confidence. The Emperor is gone. None know where. 
May we abide his return? No, it is a trick. He is hiding, here or elsewhere. He did not simply vanish. This array contains research logs. The entity's voice emanates from the grave of Mars. The scorn babble to the void, and attentively await response. Our Emperor's vision is at hand. Tomorrow we pierce the anomaly's veil. We are ready. We have communed, and are adrift between worlds. It controls the lower decks, dragging the flame. Dead whispers in the walls. There is no way back. Scribe Amsad states, The Emperor shows us we chase a mirage. The darkness is nothing but a great basin of formless thoughts. A vast tangle of composting chaos. Callus seeks the entity who speaks through the darkness. The darkness is a primal force, wielded like the light. How simple. Able to be brandished against Zivu Arath? And fall into the burrow of an ambush predator, like Umun, like Aramis. I think not. But tools can be broken, forces can be stopped, and those who wield them can be disarmed. Another decrypted entry. We hit Acheron's wall and sank. Straight down to the deep. Glide is in a bad way after the dive, all twisted. I'm all twisted. Whole crew rattling around in my skull like they're thinking for me. Scorn. What they used to be, what they are now. Dive must have opened the cells. Someone's got to clip their horns, especially the big one. Or we're dead. So, this is where they died. Their sacrifice is noted. Their names will be honored. Why were they sent? Accessing the Glycon's mainframe required a direct connection. Another entry transmitting. I didn't think it was true. All that talk about the darkness. But it saw him. Something in here. Staring. Right back into Callus's hungry eyes. Then Aldrin's rotted tykes started shrieking, and I knew. I knew I shouldn't have come here. What monstrosity is this? A crown of sorrow. A hive artifact of devilish craftsmanship meant to subvert the wearer's will. I suspected it was the crown in question. More hive witchcraft. It should be destroyed. It has been altered from its original design. Opened. Instead of controlling minds, it, it's meant to merge them. It is listening. We cannot leave the crown free. You think you can contain it? So did Callus. How long before your audacity damns the city, advisor? Your warning is noted, Empress. But this is Vanguard's space. Will you ensure the crown is undisturbed while I make preparations for its recovery? The Cabal are not at your disposal. Do so at your own peril. This morning, for the first time in humanity's long and storied history, the sun did not rise. Osiris tells me it's a Vex simulation that has plunged the city into an endless night. It seems they have found a way to harness our energy against us. And even in all his wisdom, Osiris can offer no solution. I don't know what will happen if we can't break the Vex's hold over the city. I do know that we must protect our people, no matter the cost. The Vex are machines, and no one understands machines better than the Elixir. Osiris and I could only think of one we might turn to. Mithrax, Kel of House Light. My spies report he claims to be among the last sacred splicers, those with the power to commune with machines. He may be our best and only hope. Find him, Guardian, before the Vex do.
It's been a long time, Guardian. My hidden report that Mithrax was last seen on Europa, helping Varix evacuate Elixni defectors. Both the Vex and Aramis's loyalists are down there hunting for survivors, shooting anything that moves. Be sure to shoot back. We need Mithrax alive if he's to help us with our Vex problem. Eyes up. Move. You're close, and I'm picking up unusual energy spikes ahead. Be ready for anything. who wish to join you dead in the snow. Let them be the last to fall. Come, shelter in our city, you and your people. I call a kill. Can you offer the Elixir such a thing? I just did. You'll be under the Vanguard's protection. The Vex are the enemy here, and any light bearer who disagrees can take it up with me. Then we accept. With light in our hearts, we will join you in your city, beneath the Traveler. My people shelter beneath the Great Machine. This is beyond simple generosity. I must thank Ikora for her gift. This sanctuary is not granted by Ikora alone, but by all who live in the last city. Yes, and on their behalf, let me extend a welcome. I am Osiris, and this is Lakshmi too, future war court leader and city representative. My greatest appreciations to you both. The House of Light thanks you. Your house can best show gratitude by keeping to itself. I know your assistance with the Vex will benefit us all. But not everyone in the city is so open-minded. 
You appear to be settling in. I will leave you to it. If you require further help from us, you must only ask. Uh, I shall. There are several modifications we will need for stable ether production. Submit a proposal to Ikora. She seems willing to get you anything you need. I must return to the people in the city. Future War Court has foreseen great misery for them in the days ahead. And they will need an advocate. I often forget how highly those in the tower have placed themselves. The air is thin there. Best not to breathe too much of it. You must understand this situation is tense for us all. This encampment perches on the edge of decree and democracy. I hope your stay with us will be uneventful. As do I. Alixni houses are more than tribes for sharing work and resources. They also represent living philosophies. In many ways, the House of Light is traditional. We worship the Great Machine, and we embrace ancestral roles like splicers and scribes. But in other ways, we're different. My father, Mizrax, is Kel of our house, but he does not act as past Kels. He does not take more than his share of ether, and he does not punish by docking limbs. These are radical, but popular ideas in our house. However, Mizrax Kel also believes in peace and cooperation with humanity. This is less popular. Everyone in our house has seen Elixni killed by guardians. Not just warriors, but innocents and hatchlings. I lived for many years among the Awoken, and understand that humans do good things as well. Sometimes. But the others in the House of Light have not been so lucky in their allies as I have. It will take time to earn their trust. Here lies the remnants of Kel's Scourge, a dark period in Elixni history. After the Whirlwind, many Elixni were overcome by feelings of hopelessness. They were homeless, hungry, and hunted by Guardians and Hive alike. So when Civix founded Kel's Scourge, promising to return Elixni to power with ancient weaponry, many were drawn to his call. Though the Scourge claimed to fight for Elixni empowerment, in reality, they represented the final degradation of our culture. A once great interstellar civilization was reduced to an anarchist mob, led by a power-hungry coward. Let ours be a cautionary tale. No matter how enlightened the culture, there are always those who prey on our worst impulses for their own gain. Many Elixni spend their whole lives on ships. They become more than a home. They're like a member of the family. Mizrax found me in the vent of a wrecked ship, you know. We joke that my father is a splicer and my mother is a catch. <laughs> After the fall of our homeworld, Reese, Elixni scattered across the stars. Having lost our grounding, Catches evolved from modes of transportation into permanent homes. Even after Elixni began to resettle in places like the Reef, we never lost our reverence for the machines that kept us alive. Now, after so much wandering, it's hard to believe that there's real ground beneath us and a real sky above. During our Golden Age, the Elixni civilization spanned many star systems, farther than humanity could imagine. 
and in all of our exploration, we never found anything more wondrous than the Great Machine. It's one of the few things that all Elixni houses can agree on. That's why shrines like these are made of many small pieces. Each bit was added by a different house. It's a tradition that lasted generations. Most of those houses are now extinct, and their members are scattered. It's funny. I revered the Great Machine all my life, without ever having seen it. And now that it's right overhead, I still look to this shrine for comfort. Some Elixni tell hatchlings that these wards keep guardians from attacking us in our sleep. We know this is not true, of course, but it helps hatchlings to rest peacefully. Soon enough, they must learn that the guardians cannot be stopped by such things. That they cannot be stopped at all, even by death. After that, the war changes meanings. For grown Elixni, it's a reminder that the Great Machine blesses life givers and killers alike. But now that we have seen the Guardians among their own people, taking orders and making awkward small talk, I don't think this tradition will continue in the House of Light. We no longer see Guardians as monsters, just people. Frightened and misguided. Hello, my name is Ido. My father is Mizrax, Kel of our house. I took my name from his first awoken friend, Sierra Ido. As a scribe for the House of Light, it's my job to preserve our house's history so that hatchlings may one day learn our stories. Mizrax Kel requested that I leave some records for the humans of the last city, so they might learn about Elixni culture in their own time. As he says, Inside a catch, everyone breathes the same air. Though I have doubts that the humans will care to hear our stories, the snipers who look down on us do not seem like the curious types. But the Great Machine has chosen them. So I must give them the benefit of my faith. Hopefully this effort does not go wasted. Humans think of Ether as food for Elixni, a form of sustenance. That's only partially true. Ether also catalyzes physical maturation and promotes molting. In that sense, it's like hormones in human adolescence. In a world of unlimited ether, like Rees before the whirlwind, all Elixni look like captains. That's our final form. Most Elixni you see now are underdeveloped. They're forever stunted by ether rationing, which began as a necessity and gradually evolved into a mechanism of social control. Now, Ruthless leaders like Spider use the distribution of ether to keep their followers dependent. If Elixni are ever to live in peace, we must make ether available to all, regardless of rank. This Shank has been with us for many years. She is temperamental, but loyal. She's in need of constant repair, but we're used to it. Our house has fixed every part of her, from sensors to exhaust. So when I look at her, I don't see an object. I see the members of my house. I see myself. To us, machines are vessels, not just tools. This is why scrap working is so important to Elixni culture. It's a way of sharing our spirit with the world. Even when we have nothing. I'm sure that Guardians feel the same way about their tower. It's more than a hollow form. More than the rubble it was built from. The tower is the keeper of the Vanguard spirit. And you would defend it more fiercely than any other building. 
Is it not so? I discovered this shell among spider supplies. Many elixir fear guardians, but delight at your ghosts. We think of them as extensions of the great machine's will, deserving of reverence. When we arrived here, we were surprised to discover that many guardians treat their ghosts like equals, or worse, like servants. Guardians throw their lives away for sport, in games like Crucible or Gambit, taking the miracle of resurrection for granted. As if ghosts needed the humans and not the other way around. Elixni have had their blessings from the Great Machine, it's true, but we've never known the power that ghosts grant humanity. I think that if Lixney became Guardians, we would use the light to serve the Great Machine, not our own amusement. Hmm. When I requisitioned this transmitter, I was told the helm would be a secure location. I suppose this will have to do. Greetings, Guardian. I'm Lakshmi too of the future war cult, and I am here to offer my assistance, because you need it quite badly. The future war cult has long used Vex-derived technology to see into the future. I won't bore you with an explanation of mind forking. Suffice to say, we understand its dangers and use the device responsibly. I have glimpsed our future. Guardian. What I saw was chilling. Skies dark with smoke, shouting, gunfire, and in the center of it all, standing in our city, a group of fallen, the same fallen I saw earlier. Ikora listened to my report, but she chose not to hear it. The Vanguard would rather protect its image than its people. And so, I will handle things myself. We can change this future. Stop it from happening. While I monitor your progress against the Vex and assist where I am able, I will observe these fallen. If they begin to act against us, well... When I foresaw the Red War, they laughed, until Gaul bound the Traveler. This time, I will not whisper my warnings. I will not be polite. I look forward to working with you, Guardian. Together, we can protect our city from all who would wish it harm. We have already surrendered too much. Now they want more. Meat, cloth, medicine. People in the city need these things. We ask for no more than you can give. This endless night, it drains us. Our resources are spread too thin. What you give to them, you take from the mouths of our citizens. All right. That's enough. Koro was firm. I am to provide for the Elixni as if they were our own people. Our own people? Lakshmi was right. You are too political an animal, Osiris. The House of Light. We wish to destroy the Vax. To aid the Guardian. Same as you. Yes? Do not start with this. Tell me, Mithras. Were I in one of your cities? Would you bow to all of my demands? We would give you anything you asked for. Because you are so generous? Because we would wish to live. I see. <laughs> you are fighting for your people, as I would fight for mine, yes? It is true. Split the supplies as Ikora says. 
Anything to make this false night pass more quickly. Interesting. There's been a disturbance. Sabotage in the Elixni camp. This wasn't just an attack on their ether stores. Someone wanted to send a message. Our citizens forget who they were before they found the safety of the city's walls. It's easy to mistake change as the front line of a battlefield. But this is a time for level heads and compassion. Saint-14 is already en route to investigate. I trust him, but he is torn between duty and doubt. And Lakshmi? The Vanguard has tolerated her broadcasts, as Zavala doesn't believe it's our place to interfere in civilian politics. I see now that was a mistake. We can't allow anyone to jeopardize our alliance with the House of Light, no matter their motives. Our citizens must see that the Elixni are people, just like them. Get down there. Be the calm the city needs. Hear out grievances, and keep tensions low, while I root out the perpetrators. It's time that Lakshmi and I had a little talk. You see what was done. Our ether tanks smashed. Our supplies stolen. Our home defaced. I cannot find any witnesses. This is not surprising. The locals have been under enormous pressure. You're lucky it was not worse. This destruction helps no one but the Vex. Please, instead of teaching your people to fear us, tell them the truth. The truth is that your kind has preyed upon us for as long as we can remember. There's nothing I can say that will make them forget. House Light has never raised arms against humanity. Your houses and titles are layers of politics. You're still fallen. You promised us your protection. And you've had it. We allowed your brood to squat and chitter here in our city. But still, the Vex simulation persists. If you're displeased with how you have been treated for your failure, then I suggest you camp elsewhere. Your people destroyed what little we possessed. Now we have nothing, nowhere to go. Humanity faced a challenge like that once. We banded together and built a city with walls to keep our enemies outside, where they belong. We hear her broadcasts, but more than that, we feel the energy of her words in the air. Sharp as blades pointed at an enemy. At us. You cannot ask people to live alongside their monsters. Listen to me now, Saint. Let me tell you something about monsters. Once, in a city grander even than yours, we prospered. But it did not last. Our great machine abandoned us. And when we pursued it, you sent something back. A creature fueled by hatred. It tore through our great houses like they were nothing. And then it came for the rest of us. Nowhere was safe from its insatiable rage. In its eyes, even the most innocent of Elixni were still fallen. It could die, but 
But it would not stay dead. It would shake off the rot and rise again. And if it caught you in its crushing embrace, impaled you on its ragged crest, dragged you screaming into its foul shell, none live to speak of these horrors. It called itself the Saint. My people must now see the creature every day. It sees us. If we wish to survive, we must all learn to live alongside our monsters. Guardian, I regret you had to witness my outburst earlier with the fallen leader. I am not a diplomat. And sometimes I can be terse. I know terrible things have been done in the name of the city. In the name of the future war court. In my name. You understand, though. The city is a living thing. And it is rejecting the fallen. Like a fever burning out an infection. I will speak to the fallen leader. Tell it that the future war cult will personally replenish their supplies when they are ready to move on. I do not wish them to think badly of us. I know they are your associates. What a city we would have if everyone's heart was as big as yours. Have you heard the song of the people echoing through the city? Rise up as one, march toward the sun. Hmm. The words of people reaching for dawn in this endless night. People who have still not given up hope. Neither have I. And if you were wondering, this was not the conflict I have foreseen. No. That will come later. Unless I can stop it. Osiris, there is something I must discuss with you. Lakshmi, she came to me with a proposal. Are you taking over as Titan Vanguard? She discussed it with me as well. Lakshmi has radical ideas, but they are only words. No cause for alarm. Good, good. Only words, of course. She wants what is best for the people of the city. And in truth, you would make an excellent leader. I do not seek authority. Zavala may have a beautiful desk, but he is chained to it. We could use less bureaucracy, maybe. A more proactive strategies where we reclaim ground taken from humanity. An open council in the city to speak with the citizens. Ah, I have imagined a new vanguard led by us. Led by you? I would stay back and advise. I lack the temperament for leadership. Ah, a fantasy only. I told Lakshmi I would think about it so she would go away. The words, Lach, tasted like treason in my mouth. Let her believe you are considering it. If you refuse, I imagine she might approach Lord Saladin next. And after what happened with Keitel... I understand. Later we will speak more of this. It appears Lakshmi is speaking a bit too freely. Report her behavior to Ikora, though I imagine she already knows. You should continue working with Lakshmi. Don't mention what you've heard. We must keep this as quiet as we can. With the endless night and the elixir here, the city has become a powder keg. One errant spark and it could be the end of the vanguard.
people of the last city. We have endured many great tragedies thanks to our strength and a steadfast commitment to humanity. The traveler chose us. It abandoned the fallen because they are unfit, unworthy of the light. They would take it from us if they could. The vanguard have lost their way. They embrace the darkness. Welcome Aramis' followers into our midst with open arms. Force us to celebrate our lost heroes alongside those who murdered them. Yes, the endless night is over. But now Mithrax and his house will use this opportunity to do what the fallen have always done. Covet, cheat, steal, kill. I have seen the future with my own eyes. And it has not changed. Doom still builds on our horizon like a terrible storm. But there is hope. Right now, loyalists to the future war cause and new monarchy have rounded up the fallen in our city. With the aid of Osiris, I have learned how to safely command the power of the Vex. I will use it to do what the vanguard will not. I will tear open a rift, banish the fallen to the depths of space from where they came. We alone will save humanity. I have seen the darkest of futures. And with this act, I will. No. No. <laughs> Lakshmi 2 has opened a Vex portal in the Elixni Corda. All fire teams, find and close that incursion point. Mithrax, what's your status? We are overrun. Please. Do not worry, Mithrax! I am on my way! No! You must protect your people! You are my people! Scar! This is it! Find with everything you have! Let's guide you! Unbelievable! Corey is... Gone. A great evil vanquished. A deed of legends. <laughs> I knew it! I knew we could do this! Congratulations, Guardian! This victory it is monumental! Let's not uncork every bottle of champagne in the city just yet. Osiris is right. This is a monumental victory for humanity and Elixir. But it's a battle. Not the war. Even so, victories should be cherished. Yes, Mithrax is correct. We will have a party, a celebration. A small one, to respectful, very classy. I will wear a suit. Fine. Guardian has broken their portal! Keep behind us! We will not let them harm you! Stand, friend! You will not fall today! More than enough.
guardian. The city remains. We have wrestled another day from those who would take it. But not without loss. And not alone. Elixni, Mithras. They stood with us, brothers and sisters in battle. This is a bond that cannot break. Their lost will be buried beside our own. Ikora was wise to look to our future instead of the past. We must remember that it is the Elixni who came to us, laid down arms for a chance at peace. These are not the fiends Lakshmi made them out to be. That bravery demands respect and deserves recognition. The House of Light is part of the city now, under the protection of Saint-14. In time, the memories of our past demons will fade, and our peoples will share laughter and stories. Our victory today will be one of them. More famous than Twilight Gab, I will make sure of it. Look at the city. The skies are slowly clearing, but the streets are filled with dead Vex, dead Elixni, and our people. Future war cult has scattered to the wind, but we recovered Lakshmi's body from the site of the attack. In the end, she was right about the tragedy looming on our horizon. If only she could have foreseen that it was of her own making. Now Dead Orbit has finally made good on its promise to leave the city, and take a new monarchy with it. The factions are no more. Honestly, I will miss their presence here. After all, Lakshmi did not speak for the future war cult. Some of her own people warned me she was becoming unstable, and I feel I let her slip away. I haven't told Saint yet, but I've been unable to locate Osiris. Even though Lakshmi implicated him in the attack, I don't believe he did. Osiris is a good man. Saint and I will both vouch for him. All he has to do is return to the city to clear his name. I saw the blight that was forming in our own citizens, but I never thought it would lead us here. Eris once said, we will only know our enemy's next move if we are wise enough to recognize it. My eyes are wide open now. Stay ready. I am Marasov, Queen of the Reef. I once made a great sacrifice to protect humanity from the Hive. I lost everything. My fleet. My brother my people's very way of life. I watched the dreaming city fall into ruin, desecrated by Oryx, cursed by Savathun. Now I've returned to retake this sacred place, to finally wrest it free from the Hive's claws. Although you have taken things near and dear to me as well, you have also learned that your list of enemies need not be so broadly defined. Today we are afforded a unique opportunity. The road ahead of us is fraught with perilous choices, Guardian. Choose wisely. Old friend, it is an honor to fly alongside you. Though our mission is grim, Ikora issued an order for Osiris's arrest. She has questions about his involvement in Lakshmi's attack on the Elitsni. I volunteered to collect him from the Dreaming City where he now hides. No one will touch Osiris until I know the truth. He has acted rashly in the past, but... I have never seen him willingly endanger the city. Something is wrong. I have felt it for some time now. He is... distant. 
Help me bring him home. I am... Uh, I am making way through the opposite flank from you. The hive are swarming. We will be as the mighty crabs of old and pincer them. Break their lines and meet me at Osiris' signal. Geppetto says there's another ghost nearby. Lightbearer, reveal yourself. That would be me. What are you doing here, poor brother? Did Zavala not send you away? Osiris called me for help. With all these hive around, I can see why. This reeks of zero wrath. He... called you? No. Go home. This is not your fight to take. It is mine. You can't keep him in a cage, Saint. You're not the only one who cares about him. Lectures? You know nothing. Osiris is not himself. And I will be the one to bring him back. Still fumbling around in the overworld, old light? There's an awoken device near you. It should let you slip into the ascendant plane and get you closer to Osiris. Crow and I used them to hide from Rathborn. Stalk. We were stalking, not hiding. Taken portals, awoken dimensions. Fine. Go, Guardian. Take the Crow's path. The Ascendant Plane should skirt you past the Hive's barricades. Just be sure to mind the Taken. Word to the wise. Bringing down Quiria left the Taken rattled. I don't think Savathun has control of them anymore. No matter. My bullets do not know the difference. Guardian, many Taken signals falling on you. A big Wrathborn headed your way too. Be brave. Osiris is not far ahead. I am not far ahead of you, Guardian. We converge on Osiris' signal. Then we'll see each other soon. Crow out. Whatever happens, friend, we cannot lose him. Even if I do not understand, I must believe his actions have purpose. I had hoped you'd find your way back. I'm a bit lost, actually. But this feels familiar. Do I know you? Osiris! You must come home! Answer for what you have done! The Vanguard will show mercy! Yes. Ikora and Commander Zavala are nothing if not generous. Queen Mara. Look how they've welcomed the crow into their flock. It isn't too late. You can still be forgiven. Be careful. I'll hold, hold you to it. Lower your weapons. Osiris still lives. You trust this thing? This thing and I have come to an agreement. You need only cooperate. What is it? I am Savathun, the Witch Queen. Sister of Shapes. Deepest in the Hive, Coven, etc., etc. My sister Zivor Rath hunts me on behalf of another. I wish only to be free, and Mara Sav has graciously agreed to help. And Osiris? Sweet that you should care, little bird. I have been Osiris for as long as you have known him. But rest assured, I will return him safely to you. 
in exchange for your assistance. Queen of Lies! Pray this is the one time you are telling truth. The Vanguard must know what has happened here. Stay, Guardians. I will go. Someone once told me that the line between light and dark is very thin. Walk it alongside me. For Osiris. This will guide you. A powerful relic of awoken design. Take it and return to your helm. Approach, Guardian. Believe me when I tell you that I did not know of Sabathun's deception until she arrived in the Dreaming City. She offered me a bargain. If I exercise her worm, she will release Osiris and help us defeat the Black Fleet. I recognize the risk. Her inevitable betrayal is all but a guarantee. But without her worm, Savathun is vulnerable. Unprotected by the security of her throne world. Mortal. To separate Savathun from the parasite inside her, I need Techians. Skilled, awoken mystics. Few still live. Most were lost, guiding my return to the Dreaming City when Zivu Arath ambushed us. But I can still feel their minds. The mystic compass you hold will reveal pathways to each lost Techion. Relight the pathways of the Ascendant Plane, and guide my people back to me. My wrath, Petrovenge, will brief you further. Queen Mara has already told you we must recover our lost Techians in order to free Savathun from her servitude to the Worm Gods. I will tell you how. Imagine the universe as a set of coins, stacked one on top of the other. The top coin is our reality. The bottom, the ascendant plane. Between them lies an intermeshing of ever-shifting pathways known as ley lines. Almost all the ancient pathways are now defunct, but beings of paracausal ability can navigate and rebuild them. This is the art of wayfinding. We know our lost Techians are stranded somewhere among the ley lines, and they're leaving us markers to follow. I'm forwarding you the coordinates to the first marker. It should tell us which ley line to look in. Then we'll use the blind well to tear open a rift and send you through to find them. Zivu Arath is desperate to capture her sister. Her forces, which now include the Taken, will attempt to stop you at every turn. Listen, I know your crow intends to accompany you. Mara also wants him close. Our Techians went to retrieve Queen Mara on my orders. This can't fail. Not because of him. Welcome back to the Blind Well, Guardian. It enables transit between this reality and the Ascendant Plane, using paracausal ley lines. Unfortunately, this gate opens both ways. Zivu Arath, Hive God of War, is trying to secure it for an invasion of the Dreaming City, so she can capture Savathun. We must hold this location at all costs. Glad to have you along, Guardian. Zivu Arath's forces have infested this area. Their taken rifts are destabilizing the ley lines, making alignment impossible. Hold off the taken as best you can. Once their leadership arrives, put them down and bank their taken essence. That should close the rifts and secure the area. Just like streams of water, ley lines can be polluted. Zivorath will use them to poison the blind well if she can. Stay vigilant. There's scorn inbound. It's unclear whether they're coordinating with Zivu Arath's forces or just taking advantage of the chaos. We can't risk them poisoning the blind well with dark ether. Let's clear them out. The scorn will try to harvest ether from these dead servitors. The servitors will release the ether at regular intervals. Keep an eye on the harvester to anticipate it. Once the ether is released, destroy it before it gets to the harvester.
Good work shutting down the Scorn Guardian. The timing of their mission is suspicious. Is this coordination with Zivor Arath, or mere coincidence? Zivu Arath is sending her strongest lieutenants to secure the Blind Well. We can't allow them to establish a beachhead for the Hive. Well done, God. The Reef Born, thank you. If we are to survive the coming storm, the Tower and the Dreaming City must stand united. We'll hold the Blind Well together. As we open more ley lines, we can start exfiltrating our lost Techians. Once my coven is reassembled, we'll exercise Savathun's worm and put an end to her lies. Once and for all. Approach, Guardian. I have an awoken tale to tell you. One my brother recited to our people's children quite often. Long ago, great kestrels roamed the sky. They built ornate nests in the heavens like conquerors. But in their arrogance, they ignored whispers of storms on the wind. Until one day, one such storm swept over them. It collapsed the heavens, drowned their nests. So they fled, and the storm pursued them. Most died, but a fated few washed upon the shores of a great hollow oak. There, a mother kestrel guarded her clutch. Two shells, bonded inseparably. A daughter, Riga. A son, Agar. Their hearts beat in unison. And they grew. Riga, intuitive and cunning. Agar, loyal but adventurous. Knowing they would one day wish to leave the hollow to face the storm, their mother plucked feathers from her plumage and one from each child. For Riga, she crafted a crown to keen her mind, centered by Agar's luminous feather. For Agar, she crafted a scepter, cored by his sister's obsidian feather to guide his spirit. There is truth in this tale. The scepter and crown, they are real. One I already have, the other, you will retrieve for me. When you return, I will tell you the rest. Behind the curtain of the universe lies the Ascendant Plane. Here, causality meets consciousness, and worlds are born. Go. Find our lost Techians and bring them home. The telemetry you're sending from the compass looks good. There should be a beacon nearby. I'm detecting beacon alignment, but there are enemies closing on your position. I've never seen the Taken, Scorn, and Hive coordinate like this before. It's troubling. You've aligned the beacon. Clear out that opposition so it can do its job. Detecting severe paracausal emanations in your vicinity. Get ready. Excellent work, Guardian. We couldn't have done it without you. Why are we working with Sabathun? Is it the trick where we lie and kill her instead? Because sometimes you have to take risks to do what's important. Like stopping Zivu Arath. And save Osiris, yes. You trust her? I don't know. Maybe. I want to. I don't suppose you've tried beating his location out of her? No one lets me get close enough to do so, but I will keep trying. I am at your mercy, Guardian. This construct protects me. From those who wish me harm, from my worm's hunger. But it is a prison, too. Quite elegant, don't you think? I have only one regret, and that is how long it took me to reveal myself to you. I see your synapses firing, a specimen scarred by skepticism. They call me a liar. But we share mutual interests, you and I. 
If you believe anything I tell you, believe in that. Now, let me show you a different interpretation of the truth. Who is Savathun, you ask? You already know. Oh, guardian mine. I am your friend. I tried to protect you from the Black Fleet. You called it interference. Don't worry. I was not offended. Instead, I found a form more pleasing to your eyes. Osiris was lost. Lightless. I saved him from Zivu Arath and assumed his shape so I could guide your victory against her. I ferried the reborn prince to your city so he could be redeemed. I protected Zavala from Kaido's ambitions, ending a war before it could even begin. I delivered the House of Light on its knees to Ikora. I unmasked the enemies lurking inside your city's walls and destroyed them. You may disagree with my methods, but you can't argue with results. I am no villain, and you are no hero. We are paracausal. This is my fault. I invited her in. I convinced Zavala that we needed Osiris by our side. A dark pit looked back every time I met his eyes, and I told myself it was his grief. Savathun knew she could use that. The city is the last place Zivu Arath would have searched for her. Now, Saint is tearing the system apart, looking for the real Osiris. You and Crow will need to take point with the Awoken. I don't like it, but he wants to help, and he's earned some trust. It's his decision. We're in a downpour of revelation. I've been trying to analyze every drop of information, as if I could isolate them before they're washed away. There's so much I need to reevaluate, so much I need to do. Interrogate the Witch Queen while we have a captive audience. Our enemies often flirt with arrogance when they believe they've won. See if she'll let her true intention slip. This is the Gatehouse. It leads to many places. The vault where I stowed the Scepter is one of those places. The Atlas skews you've collected serve as star charts of sorts, used to map and navigate ley lines back when they could be freely explored. Aldrin had been searching for Agar's scepter for some time when he made these. Another daring venture to win my affections against my better wishes. He often embedded travel logs into his skews. Here. Do you still walk the old paths we made? Mother's old tales come to mind. I've been adding to my favorite, the twin kestrels whose hearts beat as one. You'll have to tell me what you think when I return with the scepter. Mother Kestrel watched perfect daughter Riga as she plotted the infinite paths of the hollow as if concocting a plan for each way it could grow. But with her son, Agar, Mother instead held him tight beneath her wing in the Oak's Hollow. She pointed starward and whispered warnings of dangerous storms and cosmic sojourners that carved chaos in the sky. The beautiful depth of the dark spots caught his eye. His imagination was arrested by them. Agar struggled against his mother's wing, yearning to leap from the tallest branch and soar to see the storms for himself. But Mother Kestrel's talon caught him. She scolded him to never leave the canopy. She held him in crushing closeness, 
and vowed not to show you the stars again. He grew to resent her protection. If it is still unclear, the twin kestrels represent Aldrin and myself. Their mother is Osana Sav. Aldrin found Osana's prescriptions restrictive. I never considered her a mother myself, but her dreams of foresight interested me. We both saw calamity looming, Osana and I. In the distributary, where the Awoken were born, we were eternal. Osana would hide there forever rather than face the enemy. When we left to form the Reef, many chose to hide with her. You're done here. I'll send for you when more skews reveal themselves. I know you have reservations about my arrangement with Sadathun. I feel it in your heart. For all her clever machinations, the Witch Queen did not anticipate your success in stopping Quoria or the Endless Night. Her schemes unravel, and now she needs my protection from Zibu Arath, from the Worm Gods, from you. I have already learned much by observation. The Taken pursued her here. Taken she once controlled. Taken that now serve a new master. Or, if Sabathun is to be believed, their original master. Not her brother, Oryx, but something far older. She fears it. It commands Zibu Arath to conquer the ascendant space surrounding the Dreaming City. To use the Taken in her campaign against us. For now. Sabathun claims that without the Taken, she cannot break the curse she placed on the Dreaming City. She thinks she can entice me with these half-truths and secret temptations. But she underestimates the lengths to which I will go to correct the past. The attacks against the Blind Well have become stronger lately. Is Zivu Arath trying to rescue Sabathun? Zivu Arath has plans for her sister. They do not involve a rescue. I've been to the Dreaming City before, but I don't know if I've ever really taken time to appreciate it until now. There is so much more than you've seen. And all of that, it pales to what resides in the Distributary. You could stay, if you wanted. I could show you. I'm not sure the Vanguard would... I don't know. There's no need to decide now. Think it over. You deserve to know your people's history. Your trespass beyond the veil brings you closer to victory. Both mine and yours. Beacon ahead. Be cautious. I'm detecting beacon alignment. But there are enemies closing on your position. What horrors have my Techians endured in their wayward state? I pray they return to me as they once were. The final beacon is aligned. I'm detecting severe paracausal emanations in your vicinity. Get ready. It's over. The beacons have aligned and the rift is open. Bring our Techian home. here is overwhelming. With Quiria defeated, I assume Savathun would have lost control of them. But they seem just as organized, just as directed. By whose hand? There are greater things in the dark than Hive Gods, Ikora. The Black Fleet's powers are vast. Oryx did not invent the Taken. He merely borrowed them. Flint. How did you decide your Guardian was the right one? Well, I had been searching for years for my Guardian. Longer than most other ghosts. But the moment I found him, I knew he was the one. Are you sure you couldn't have searched for just a bit longer? Nope. Once more, we part the curtain of reality, and you step beyond. 
the Taken infest every corner of the Ascendant Plane I've seen. Like the tendrils of some great fungus. Ever spreading. Excellent work, Guardian. We could... The twin kestrels darted through the gaps between branches. The leaves formed verdant pathways. Predictably, Riga first, with Agar close behind. In those pathways, they traded secrets. Secrets Riga whispered to the flock, hoping to push them beyond the hollow, beyond the forest. Most nights, Riga and Agar sat beneath the stars to dream. Twin hearts sounding a duet of beats. Like ours, Mara. I still feel yours. Still distant. In this story, Agar fixated on the dark clouded pox that marred the night above the canopy. He pointed to the starry spaces between them and asked his sister to name them. Riga never spoke a word. She already knew all their names and didn't want to crush his spirit. How charitable. One night, Agar grew impatient of her silence and pointed to one of the dark spots as it roared with thunder. The storm is singing to us, said Agar. We should sing back to show it we are not afraid. Riga wove her voice with his, and the thunder resounded. She did not sing with him again after that night. Rare to see stars in the ascended plain. I wish we were doing this together. Why hide the scepter if it weren't a test? I know you are awoken, cousin, but not of the reef. This may not be known to you. When the Awoken people came into being after the Collapse, I was the first. As first, my chosen form defined what an Awoken could be. Thousands followed my example, willing themselves into existence within the Distributary. Some, like Aldrin, required help. His mind was like an unsteady form. No surprise he was unable to do it on his own. So I guided him filled the gaps in his memory. I gave him a star to follow. He was bonded to me, and his devotion spiraled into pathetic recklessness. Even through death, he hasn't outgrown that dependency. I see it in him, as he looks longingly to his ghost for answers. To you. We awoken were born of light and dark. Our perspective on the universe is a complex one. The light is not inherently good, as your warlords of the Dark Age so clearly demonstrated. In spite of Zavala's preconceptions, darkness is not inherently evil. Some among you already discovered this on Europa. In my travels, I have seen true evil. It is the worm gods that the Hive serve. It is the Black Fleet waiting to strike. It is the entity that commands them all. The voice in the darkness. These creatures are not evil because they wield darkness. They are evil because, like Sarathun and Zivu Arath, they are cruel, hateful things with no regard for the lives of others. Some might say that includes me as well. I will let history be the judge of my guilt. Before that judgment is cast, I will see my Techians returned. Perhaps with them, I can save us all. Riga worried their song had attracted the storm's attention and made plans for the flock to leave the hollow. She locked herself away to study. The separation, pain, like you know it does. Unable to bear the loneliness, Agar finally took to the sky. High above, the open air cradled him like star cloth ribbonettes. He felt peace in the deafening rush, 
of wind across his feathers. Once he found them a new home, Riga would love him as he loved her. She would offer him the scepter their mother had crafted for him. The scepter that Riga selfishly kept. But as he approached the forest's edge, night fell and thunder shook his heart. Agar saw a great storm building on the horizon. Had he the scepter, he could have fought. Instead, he listened, straining through the thunder for the faint secondary beat of Riga's twin heart. Through lightning and chaos, he followed it home. Agar told Riga of the storm, the forest's edge and the gleaming bulbs of starlight clashing overhead. She didn't scold him or tell Mother Kestrel. She listened and heard the possibility in his tale. Gratitude. Imagine that. In another life, I'd have appointed Aldrin dominion of the reef's borderlands to expand and connect the kingdom under my reign, Agar's scepter in hand. He would have used it to open doors and challenge foes best left alone. He was not unlike a guardian already, and he would have died before his time. Aldrin's fall was a predetermined point, so I hid the scepter away and gave him something safe to chase. He often strayed from that path. Beacon alive. They'll have felt that. Be ready. Last beacon aligned. Be ready for anything. Excellent work, Guardian. We couldn't have done it without you. That's just... I can't shake the feeling of dread. Like something out of a bad dream. And not just the time the High Celebrant threw me in that pit. It's like this place is haunting me. Or you're haunting it. The Ascendant Plane is as much what you bring to it as it is what you see. Osiris was like family to me. You've never even met him. I know. Just let me speak to Sabathun, please. No, I won't give that witch another chance to dig her claws into you. Maybe she's right, Crow. You know I am. Sabathun is already in your head. You're a liability to the mission. Why do you have such a problem with me, Petra? Five minutes, that's all I'm asking. The Queen of the Reef forbids it. Well, I don't take commands from the Queen of the Reef. Sabathun unraveled the Dreaming City with a single wish. I've spent years trying to contain that mistake. Better men than you died because of it. To my ear, it sounds like you're the liability. Maybe your Queen's trust in you was misplaced. A knife against a hunter? Hmm. <laughs> I'd be more careful who you pick fights with. Another step, and my Corsairs will have to prepare you a second grave. Save it for the Hive, both of you. This isn't getting us anywhere. Thank you. We can all probably use a minute to cool off. Oh. Oh no. Keep both eyes on that one. You can't stop the inevitable. No one can. Though Petra Van seems perfectly willing to try. I've always sympathized with Crow, you know. 
all the kind words I shared with him as Osiris were sincere. I know what it's like to be an exile. To be hated for things outside of your control. It would be better for Crow if we talked. I want to explain why I did what I did. I want him to know that my affection is true. Because the less he knows, the more vulnerable he is. Doomed to be strung along by false promises from supposed benefactors. But then again, I'm the one trapped in the crystal prison. What do I know? Glint, patch me into Misrax. Venge thinks I'm vulnerable, and I'm supposed to just take a seat? Like I was the only one fooled by Savathun wearing Osiris' skin? You'd known him far longer than I thought I had, but I don't see her forbidding you from speaking to her. Because it's not about me. It's about who I was, isn't it? Every time the Vanguard tells me that things will get better, I thank them. As if it's a privilege not to be beaten to death. Our past lives aren't supposed to matter. I'm beginning to wonder why I'm the only guardian being judged by mine. No more apologies. No more creeping around on eggshells. I deserve an audience with Savathun. I deserve to know how much of what she told me as Osiris was a lie. I deserve answers. I don't need to be Marasov to see into your mind, Guardian. You think I'm making a mistake. You think I barred Crow out of pettiness. I won't say I didn't recommend it, but it was the Queen's order for his own safety. I see Prince Aldrin's arrogance in him, his desire to please. He's vulnerable. Aldrin and your Crow are echoes of each other. Surely you can see that. They share kindred weaknesses. Sabathun will exploit them again if we let her. But with Mara back, I can finally see the end approaching. It's been a long time coming. There are still Techians in need of your strength. I wish I could fill their place, but this must be how things are. I'm here if you need me. Each ascendant beacon you reawaken reclaims a road once lost to me. Broadens my sight. But my realm still aches. Savathun has done so much to destroy everything my people worked for. She stole my brother from me, twisted his mind, and delivered him to his executioners. Then she had the audacity to steal him from the Traveler, manipulate him, and... lead him back home. It is strange, having him here. And yet not. Fro is a wounded bird, flinching away from me. So much like Aldrin, but lost without a guiding hand. Do you understand why I forbade him from speaking with Savathun? This reunion is such cruel kindness. I will find a way to repay her for it. And you will continue to bring me the Techians I need to do so. a great many to fly with the twins when they left the hall. He knelt before Riga and presented the crown of feathers their mother had crafted for her and waited for her to respond in kind. She rose as queen but did not gift Agar the scepter. His scepter. Despite everything, she still said he wasn't ready. It was a test of his will, right? His devotion, one he would not fail. For he was patient, so patient. Together the twins led the flock away from the Oak's Hollow to carve new nests in distant boughs beyond the forest's edge. 
Agar flew far and wide at Riga's behest, always thinking of her test, and returned home with tales of all that he had seen. Dark clouds surrounded them. Fires burned within trees, split by thunderous bolts. His twin kept his words close. Riga scattered prophetic bones and traced their curvature like weathered oaken bends. In them the signs were clear. A great storm did indeed approach. They in its path. And so they prepared themselves for war. I wish. I wish you'd just give it to me. I could use it to help us face what we both know is coming. It doesn't even belong to you. This coming storm he speaks of was the Flashpoint. The battle of Saturn against the Taken King. It was the shift from stability into dissonance. I failed to shape Aldrin in accordance with my goals, but if I were to take all that he was and reveal that past to him now, would he be my brother? Or is it only his echoes that remain? I see many of those same beginnings leading now to different ends. Tell me, would you be so forgiving if Crow carried more of Aldrin with him? Would you still accept him? A defensive ward has been engaged over the scepter. It is a failsafe to keep it protected. Either my brother found this place without my knowledge and set it off, or the ward was engaged when the surrounding architecture suffered structural damage. There is a bypass. It is code, kept secret, in that it has been scattered across dozens of terminals throughout the Awoken territory. Fret not, you don't have to collect them. I will have the pieces consolidated and reformed. While you wait, you needn't stand idle like a lost child. Return to me. My borders are threatened. And you're certain she's contained? Certainty is a necessity. It is your doubts we should fear with Savathun among us. Be straight with me. Remember who you are speaking to. I hold all the keys to all your futures. I would not let them dangle carelessly without attention. Savathun's never been a one-track type of opponent. She's playing you. We are not the same, Ikora. This is a plan long set in motion. She is contained and soon to be dead. Was Osiris's capture part of your plan then? Sagira's death? Navigating the future is not always clear. If you're willing to sacrifice my people for your plans, how can I be sure you'll wait to see Osiris return before slitting the Witch Queen's throat? I mourn for Sagira. I have every intention to see Osiris return safely. It's more than you did for me. If my assurances mean nothing to you, let me offer a warning instead. You are following your doubts into Sagatha's trap. Your arrogance might kill another one of my friends. If he isn't dead already. Had I more wishes, things would not be as they are. Had you more wishes, they'd be much worse. Excellent work, Guardian. We couldn't have done it without you. Based on this latest expedition, Zivu Arath's forces appear to have gathered their strength. Zivu Arath's title as the Hive God of War is no mere gilding. She earned it. She is a strategist and tactician. Her sister may be known for her cunning, but there is more at work here than a sword's edge. People of the last city, recently the Vanguard has been scrutinized for a lack of transparency. And we've paid for it. I hope this broadcast represents our efforts to the contrary. Many of you came to me having witnessed the Vex attack. Many of you claim to have seen Osiris present there. 
We now know this was a deception, an illusion spread by our enemies to turn us against each other. It worked for a time, and we mourn those lost to the senseless violence unleashed in our streets. But we have overcome that fear, and we now stand united. Humanity, Elixni, and the Awoken of the Reef. Our allegiance is what the Witch Queen fears. It is what she meant to stop by sowing discord. It is what will lead us to victory. Know that this battle is not one we are bringing to your doorstep, but it is one we fight to keep the city out of the line of fire. The Vanguard asks for your patience and understanding. If you can offer those, we will offer what insights we can to your questions. You are always welcome in the tower, but I will be in the streets. I've been thinking about family quite a bit. What with all the spare time I have. It might surprise you to hear, but everything my siblings and I have done has been for each other. Even though the Vanguard isn't quite the same, they're no different at heart. You'd do anything for your family, chosen or otherwise. Go to any lengths to avenge them. Look at the Crow and Queen Mara. Siblings. Bonded by cosmic fate. Forever orbiting one another like binary stars. Mara reminds me of my sister. She's afraid. Holding on so tightly because she can't bear to lose one more thing. But we all have to let go. When I am separated from my worm, I'll be separated from Zivu Arath, too. And then my sister will be alone. The last of us. But as much as I care for her, I cannot stay like this. Osiris, I will not abandon you. As I speak, these guardians of the city patrol across the system searching. I am searching for you. No amount of hive spawn or Sabathun's trickery will stand between us. You will see freedom. You will return. It is not your way to die. Wait for me. As I did for you. You have never practiced patience. But hold on a few moments more. Saint. Have the hidden found him? Saint, you don't have to broadcast these live. I see. This is true. Geppetto can establish a repeating signal. It will forward any response directly to you. Besides, I could use you in the field. Yes. I am, if nothing else, useful. More than that, you are needed. I knew it was not him, but I would not listen to my heart. Compassion can be abused. Optimism has its pitfalls. Flaws don't make them worthless. Even lies can be learned from. Do not worry. I think I will not be using compassion next time Sabathun stands before me. No, I think we have a whole different set of emotions to deal with that moment. Osiris is out there. We will find him. subordinate came to my doorstep as a thief. Their death is the price of encroachment. Agar's scepter carves pathways toward one's goals. The compass you carry is based off the same principles as this weapon. In Oldrin's hands, it could have connected every edge of my kingdom. Through Zivu Arath, it would grant an omnipresence within the reef even I could not subdue. Deliver it safely to me. While it may never be Aldrin's, it may yet serve to guide what he has become. So you wish to hear the rest of my brother's story? Fine. 
I will oblige you. When the storm came, Riga and Aga rode the winds to meet it. A fleet of talons at their back. A great battle ensued. The storm took, as was its nature. Many fell, Agar among them. Riga could only watch as he tumbled down, 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 until her heart beat alone. She dove into the storm, giving herself to destroy it. Riga's spirit ascended higher into the sky where she hoped to reunite with her brother. Instead, she met the thing that sent the storm, a bottomless well of grief, unreachable by reasoning or bargaining or violence. A voice in the darkness. And so, Riga gathered her feathers into an aegis of wings to shield the world below. But over the years, feathers broke away. Futility wore thin her resolve. Then, one day, her heart began to beat as it once had. Doubled, distant, but different. A beautiful echo. Hope called her home. And though she prayed to find Agar there, he never returned. I still feel Aldrin's heartbeat somewhere out there. When your crow first stood in my halls, I saw an ember of my Aldrin burning in his breast. Curiosity and a sibling fondness told me I could stoke that ember. I hope it is not a lie. I hope he is more than the last ebb of hot ash from a long dead flame. Many of his faults were not of his own making. Aldrin's decisions were his, of course, but driven by whips in the hands of others. Myself included. I will have to offer him more than an old story of an empty promise if I wish to see that ember burn again. This is the path I led Aldrin down. If certain actors had kept to their roles, I would have wielded Aldrin Salve, Light Bearer. But even Mara Salve cannot control everyone. I celebrate his resurrection in the light. But I detest seeing my brother rewritten, his greater self sloughed away and swept into the cellar. There is still good to draw from who he was. Don't squander it. He needs a star to guide him. Aldrin or Crow, they are the same in that regard. Agar's scepter is yours, then. Both its burden and the freedom it can provide. Be careful with it, Guardian. He is prone to devotion. This mausoleum is a memorial to a Techium, Malori, the first Wayfinder to traverse this ley line. Malori was brilliant, like a star burning in the blackness of space, a beacon for others, aspirational. But it was her insatiable curiosity that took her life when she ventured into the Black Garden against my wishes and never returned. Taken infestations, spreading like a cancer through the ley lines. These need to be cleared. The source of this corruption is at hand. Find it and destroy it. These wells once served as springs of ascendant energy, used by Artechians to sculpt structures such as this. Now they are barren parodies of their once noble purpose. One day, perhaps, they will shine again. 
How long have your hidden been privy to Oldring's resurrection? Long enough to watch over him in your absence. And you didn't direct him home. Why? There was a concern he'd pick up some old habits. You know the god would be sick. Riven twisted his mind. Eris would have seen it. She is not so easily deceived by skin-deep tricks. It's true I made mistakes out of an idea of justice. Are you leveling the same scrutiny toward Petra? Wasn't she supposed to be watching his grave? Petra has paid her dues. The Vanguard murdered him and has yet to pay theirs. We both lost family. I'm sorry for my part in yours, but Crow has been treated. My brother is dead. He was exhumed, his body twisted into caricature. You had your vengeance. Is that what you're after? I still feel that grief like a stone caught in my chest. Some days it's more pronounced than others. Vengeance didn't erode that grief. Then tell me, who am I to blame? Who sent him into Sabathun's clutches? Who bludgeoned Aldrin into a scared animal and drove him from his home? You did, Mara. And those guardians who hurt him did so out of misguided anger. Don't make their same mistake. Don't make my mistake. We are surrounded, a ring of spears pointing inward from the edges of our system. The Black Fleet could have destroyed us, and yet they have waited. Why? Sabathu knows more than she lets on. It is the only reason she still lives, and she is keenly aware of that fact. It is why Zivo Arath pursues her so relentlessly. For Zivo Arath answers to the same entity as the Black Fleet. We must uncover whatever secrets she knows with the time that we have. I must reiterate, she will try to betray us. It is all that a wretched, self-serving creature like Sabathu knows how to do. She needs me to free herself of her worm, but after that... The blind well requires alignment. As you rescue my remaining Techians, continue your audiences with her. How did Mies Rax put it? We must all learn to live alongside our monsters. Though I suppose he never said for how long. Petra, it's Ikora Ray. I thought now would be a good time to check in. Things are progressing as well as can be expected, given the circumstances. While we've recovered some of the lost Techians, we still don't have everyone we need to separate Savathun from her worm. Understood. Don't rush this on my account. Savathun may be waiting for the freedom she thinks is coming, but frankly, I don't care what she wants. This needs to be done with as minimal risk to your people as possible. I know you hope that this will lead you to Osiris, but you want my opinion? Osiris is already dead. Savathun is a creature of lies. She has no honor. Your opinion is noted. And on the subject of opinions, how's Crow? You want my take? On him? In a word, vulnerable. But Queen Mara refuses to send him away. Though, you could. Trust is a delicate thing, Petra. I don't want to lose his. This is important to him. I trust Crow to make the right choices, and for you to protect him from himself if he doesn't. It's over. The beacons have aligned and the rift is open. Bring Artekian home. Another victory. It's refreshing to see what we can accomplish when Guardians and Awoken cooperate. I don't know. The Awoken out here seem to be good at doing two things. Losing and hiding. The Guardian and I could have done this ourselves. You're welcome to go off on your own whenever you like, Crow. I'd hate to play into the stereotype. I think I'll stick around. When this is over... I wonder if Mara will uphold her end of the bargain and let me live. Killing me is probably at the top of your to-do list as well, isn't it? You've done a lot of killing over the years. Let me ask you something. Of all the enemies you fought, how many saw your ghost and realized, ah, oh, that's why Guardians are so strong? Not most, but some. 
They might have even taken a shot at it. R.I.P. Cade. Now, how many saw beyond your ghost? How many followed the line of your light straight back to the Traveler? And how many knew enough to aim a weapon there? A few. The smart ones. The dangerous ones. You'd recognize their names. Listen to me now. Look beyond me to my worm. Look beyond my worm to something far, far worse. Then look down at that little gun in your hand and tell me. What do you think you're going to do with that thing? My coven of Techians is almost assembled. Well done. Soon all they will be left to do is wait for the ley lines to fall into position. Then we may exercise Sabathun's worm and reclaim Osiris. She divulges more to you than I, Guardian. Though it can be difficult to separate poisonous words from the honeyed ones. I worry that the crow is especially susceptible. I feel the desire for approval in him as I felt it in Aldrin, and he idolized Osiris almost as much as he idolizes you. Do not forget what has been asked of you. Until the ritual is ready, continue charting ley line passages. We are so close to bringing the last of my lost Techians home. Another victory. It's refreshing to see what we can accomplish when Guardians and Awoken cooperate. I don't know. The Awoken out here seem to be good at doing two things. Losing and hiding. The Guardian and I could have done this ourselves. You're welcome to go off on your own whenever you like, Crow. I'd hate to play into the stereotype. I think I'll stick around. You were kind to me. I thought you were my friend. Am I not? You lied to me! I helped you break Zivu Aras hold on the shore, brought you to the last city, offered you guidance. Stop. If that's what you want. I want the truth. I was kind to you because I wanted to be. Because the truth hurts. You know this better than anyone. Shrinking away from the rumors of the man you used to be. I'm not him. How can you say that when you don't even know who he is? If the truth is what you really want, then lay your hand on me. Crow, don't. Please. See? Even your ghost thinks you're better off in the dark. Show him. Everything. No, wait! You hurt him. Someone had to. Better for it to have come from a friend. Don't give me that look. I told you that you can't stop the inevitable. Deep down, Crow wanted to know. He was going to find out one way or another, guardian taboos or no. You should thank me. Just imagine if it had come from someone with bad intentions. Someone who could have colored the truth about how he died to turn him against you. Against the Traveler. But I would never do such a thing. I see too much of myself in him. We were both looking for our purpose. Now that the Crow has found his as a guardian, he can see it for what it truly is. 
a second chance. Something to reflect on. If people didn't want him to know, was it to protect Crow from himself? Or was it to protect themselves from Crow? I do so enjoy our talks. Aldrin Sov, a woken prince, brother to the queen, murderer. Now I know the man I was. And you. You. I'm sorry. You did what you had to do. I don't think I would have told me either. Savathun's visions were like a waking dream. I could feel the heat of the flames. Taste the blood in my mouth. I saw everything he did through his eyes. You're afraid of who I used to be. That he'll come back somehow. I am too. So I've asked Ikora to put me on another assignment. One where I can be somewhere I know my choices are my own. Tell Mara. Tell her whatever you want. I'll see you again when I'm ready. Ikora, I need to get out of here. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. I want out now. Either you reassign me or I'm done. Done? With you, with the Vanguard, with everything. Crow, you have my full support. If you want to be reassigned, I can do that. But maybe you need to take some time first. If I stop moving right now, I'm... I'm afraid I'm going to fall apart at the seams. I need to keep moving, but I, I can't do that here. I need to be as far away from her as possible. Would you mind working with someone you know? Who? I need an operative to act as an intermediary with Empress Kaido. It's an important responsibility. Maybe we could discuss it in person. I'll be at the tower soon. When I first saw Pro, I looked into his mind. I did not see my brother's memories. Savathun dredged them from a place beyond my grasp when she revealed his past life to him. She suspects I do not mean to let her live once the separation ritual is complete and is testing our patience. Perhaps she means only to hurt me. The risk of her cunning is too great, no matter her intentions. Until the conditions are right for us to exorcise her worm, I am restricting all access to Sabathun. I will, however, afford you one last meeting to conclude your investigations before I seal her away. Steal your mind when you face her, Guardian. The Witch Queen is no less dangerous now than she has ever been. We have one last Techium to locate. Go forth. Ikora. I need to get out of here. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. I want out now. Either you reassign me or I'm done. Done? With you, with the Vanguard, with everything. Crow, you have my full support. If you want to be reassigned, I can do that. But maybe you need to take some time first. If I stop moving right now, I will. I'm afraid I'm going to fall apart at the seams. I need to keep moving, but I, I can't do that here. I need to be as far away from her as possible. Would you mind working with someone you know? Who? I need an operative to act as an intermediary with Empress Kaido. It's an important responsibility. Maybe we could discuss it in person. I'll be at the tower soon. Your compass's work is almost done. We need to defend the blind well for just a while longer. And then Savathun will kneel before the one true queen of the Reef. The Scorn's continued presence here can't be all about the Aether. There must be a larger strategy at play. Strategy is not the Scorn's greatest asset. Their uncommon focus belies a greater will than we've seen before. The coming attack could destabilize the Blindwell's energy regulation system. If we lose the regulators, there's no telling how the Blind Well will react, or how Zivu or Roth will take advantage. 
Energy readings have stabilized. The Guardian's compass has guided us faithfully yet again. Zewarath claws at the fabric of this reality, forcing her way through. Protect the compass. I can barely feel them. My Tekians, lost between realms. But beyond that, in the background, there is something else. It is not Zivu Arath. It is not simple hive madness. It is as though the space between the stars has been waiting. Watching. And it hates us. A whole reality, sculpted by strength of will. And all we've seen are the thinnest edges of the Ascendant Plane. It's done. The beacons are in alignment, and Zivu Arath's forces are in retreat. Let's bring our lost sister home. The Guardian is reporting in that we've made more progress in the Ascendant Plane. Have there been any notable changes in the Dreaming City, my queen? None. The Witch Queen stirs from time to time, but has remained silent. She can sense my ire. She is reveling in it. But I will let her have this small victory. Preparations for Sabathun's exorcism are underway. But the ritual can't begin without a cosmic alignment. It will take time. I want to express my gratitude for saving our new coven of Techians. They are young, with many years left to train. You've preserved their potential. Thank you. I tried to do the same for Crow, even if it pains my queen to see him leave. It's hard to imagine there's a safer place for him than at her side, but this is for the best. You saw what Savathun did to him. She could do more. Prince Aldrin and I were friends once, you know. In our own strange way. I still think about him all the time. The sound of that gunshot. He's free now. To find his way between the stars. If only we could all be so lucky. I've been keeping tabs on you. Your victories against my sister. The mess you've made of the Ascendant Plane while you rescued your third string witches. Delightful to see so many working towards a common goal, isn't it? I'm glad I can again be the catalyst that brings humanity and the Reef together. It's a pity Mara Sav doesn't see it that way. Her face is a perfect porcelain mask. But look behind her eyes, and you can see the incandescent rage burning within. She's very upset with me. This will be our last talk until the day of the ritual, O oh Guardian Mine. Now that Marasov's coven is assembled, the only thing left to do is to keep Zivu Arath from ruining things while the ley lines fall into position. This may take some time. But I have waited millennia to be free. I can hold out for just a little bit longer. Farewell. For now. Um, Petra? Uh, Miss Venge? Can you hear me? What do you need? Well, I just... No. I mean, what she, what Sabathun showed Crow? You won't tell me. The truth, I imagine. Or perhaps some shade of it. My queen is furious. Oh, right. I'm sorry. For a lot of things, but mostly for Crow. Being Crow. It's not your fault. I could have told him. So could I. It's not the same. No. I suppose it isn't. How long did it take Mara to forgive you for a... what happened to him? To Aldrin? Be patient, little light. He'll come around. How do you know? Because Aldrin was always a fool for love. And your crow loves you. 
The time is at hand. The beacons shine bright and the ley lines are set in place. My Techians are prepared to perform the ritual that will separate Savathun from her worm. Although she claims she will help us in our fight against the Black Fleet and the entity that commands it, she cannot be trusted. You have coaxed enough information from her for my purposes. I will do what must be done. But know that Zivu Araf won't let her sister, or her sister's worm, go without a fight. I call on you once more, Guardian. Your knack for violence is needed. Make your final preparations and head to the Dreaming City. We will see you when you arrive. Guardian, thanks to your efforts, my coven is reassembled. Once the blind well is prepared, the ritual to exercise Savathun's worm will begin. The Hive are disrupting the alignment of the blind well. Realign the beacons to activate the ley line network. The ley lines thrum with energy. All is in readiness. Assemble in my spire for the ritual. Look to the sky, God. Hear the worm gods roar. After millennia of insatiable destruction, they are powerless against my retribution. This is Zivu Arath's last chance to capture Savathun. She's dispatching all local forces to the Spire. Use the teleporters to join us as soon as you can. Corsairs to me! Fall back to the entrance! Hold this line to the last soldier! For the reef! Guardian, with the ley lines activated, Zivu Arath's forces are pouring in from the Ascendant Plane. We're being overrun! Break through the hive lines! is about to begin. Hello, my love. Osiris admired your patience, but you look antsy to me. Having doubt? Doubt is a useful tool, but double-edged. Do not let it lead you astray. Ugh! Leave him be, and keep to your promises, or I'll let him drag you into Zivu Arath's waiting jaws. And then she would swallow you as well. Why must we threaten each other? I am merely clarifying my intent. It is time. Yelaya, Sajari, Austin, and Savith. We are sisters of circumstance. Bonded by fate, open those bonds to each other, become one, expel the parasite from our collective. This moment is simply the strike of a match. The fires we light here will burn long after. Large concentrations of Zivu Arath's forces are closing in on our position. Protect the Queens. None shall enter! Zivu Arath's forces are converging on your position. 
defend Queen Mara and the Techians until the ritual is complete. Take shelter! You do come to the One can feel the bullets bounce off! All the time you need! I am here! Zebu Roth is desperate. She's sending her new champion as a last resort. bearing down on you. Your family is tenacious, if nothing else. No more than yours. My brother spent years suffering punishment for the path you made him walk. Finally, justice finds its mark. Let this be the end of it. Plans are fickle things. Two can view the same events and predict entirely different outcomes. I was outmaneuvered, and Savathun slipped through my fingers. I was sure that this path, these actions were absolute. But change is a prolonged effort. It requires application of steady pressure. There will always be backslides. Do not lose the summit in the climb. After Saint-14 returned Osiris to your tower, my Techiums verified his identity. Savathun upheld her end of the bargain. And she did not escape unscathed. Her worm is mine. It will grant many insights, I am sure. The curse on the Dreaming City can yet be broken. Go home, Guardian. Prepare for what is inevitably to come. Osiris lives. Thank you, friend. Savathun tried to bury him, to use him like currency for bargaining. She wore his face and spoke with his voice, but they were not his words. I did not believe the Witch Queen would hold to her promise. I... I thought I would never see him again. He is... Lost in sleep. Without the light, it is difficult to know if he will recover. But he is safe. I need time, Guardian. I will see to Osiris' care. When he awakens, I want my face to be the first he sees. Perhaps I will joke that... Now we are even! Salvathun has many enemies. 
but she has never faced Saint Fourteen. We will find her, and this time it is her who will be buried.